What's up guys, it's River and today we're looking at the three best beginner cameras for when you're first starting out. Now these cameras have to be affordable because when you're just starting out you don't have a lot to spend. So the kit lens has to be included, but they also have to have a high powered sensor to provide stunning image quality because as a photographer, you should not feel limited in any way. So let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly what each of these cameras does and which camera is perfect for you. Let's get into it. And just to let you guys know, there's a link in the description down below for the best pricing on these cameras. So the first camera on our list is the Nikon D3500. This is a very solid beginner camera because it comes with a kit lens for only $399. Now it has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is very standard and very, very respectable. It does 12-bit RAW and five frames per second, which is very, very decent considering the price point of $399. The 12-bit RAW codec is ideal for a beginner photographer. You definitely don't want to be shooting JPEGs because it simply will not give you the flexibility. The 12-bit RAW will give you plenty of room, will give you plenty of flexibility in post, and it will really allow you to finesse and edit your images into perfection. On top of that, it has a very solid autofocusing system. I was really surprised by how well this camera does in continuous. Generally, lower end cameras tend to do better in single focus and not very well in continuous, but this camera is pretty decent at tracking subjects. The colors right out of this camera are very neutral and they aren't really anything special. I would really recommend getting this camera with the intention of massaging and finessing the images into perfection. The 12-bit RAW really helps with the flexibility and you can really massage your photos in Photoshop or Lightroom. The one big drawback with this camera is that it's not very good in low light. A lower end model like this generally does not tend to give you very clean images at high ISOs, but also the kit lens is not very, very fast. If you wanna do low light work or you think you'll be in situations where you'll need a low light camera, I would not recommend this. The battery life in this camera is pretty decent. You'll generally get about 200 to 300 shots before your battery gets close to dying. So if you do want, you could potentially shoot all day with this camera if you're smart with the battery. One big disappointment with this camera is that the video is pretty meh. Again, I don't expect a lot from a 399 camera, but I was hoping that the video was decent. If you're looking to do video with this camera, I would just completely skip it. And the camera after this might be what you're looking for. Overall, this is a really decent camera and it pretty much beats all of the Canon Rebel entry-level cameras by a wide margin. If you're a young artist or just someone that's picking up photography and just wants to get their feet wet, I really recommend this camera specifically because of the price points. Next up, we have the A6000. If the Nikon D5300 wasn't quite fast enough or you wanted to do video, the A6000 is probably what you're looking for. So the Sony A6000 is very affordable at only $550 and it comes with a very good kit lens. The one thing I like about buying Sony cameras is that even their cheap kit lenses are very, very good lenses. The sensor in the camera is 24 megapixels. Again, that's very standard in the middle of the road. You really wouldn't expect to do less than 24 megapixel today. The one impressive thing about this camera is the fact that it has 12-bit RAW and 11 frames per second. Again, that 12-bit RAW will give you plenty of flexibility in post. It's not 14-bit RAW, but you probably won't notice the difference. What I really appreciate about that 11 frames per second is that it allows me to shoot a wider variety of subjects. I could do sports, I could do wildlife, could do a fast-paced model shoot. Pretty much anything you wanna throw at this camera, it will most likely be be able to handle. The color science in this camera is very neutral and it's very middle of the road. I would really expect someone to pick this camera up and expect to really massage those photos in Photoshop or Lightroom. This is not a camera where you're just going to get really good photos right off the rip. You're going to have to put in the extra elbow work. But one thing that I have noticed is that I find Sony cameras tend to have a ton of dynamic range. Even in 12-bit RAW, I would say the dynamic range in these cameras is closer to 14-bit RAW. And one of my favorite things about this camera is the autofocus. Sony has always been known for having spectacular autofocus. The image quality in their cameras is sometimes hit and miss, but the autofocus is always spot on. This camera has blazing fast autofocus and you're going to need it for 11 frames per second of shooting. Despite it being an older camera from 2014, this is a very, very solid camera body. It is unfortunately not weather sealed, but if you take care of it, it will not fall apart on you. This is a camera that is made to last. And a quick note on the A6000 battery. Now this is a slightly older camera before they really figured out the thermals. It is not a particularly long lasting battery. These batteries are really cheap and you can pick one up on Amazon for as little as 20 to $15. But I only expect this battery to last maybe two, maybe two and a half hours in photo mode and maybe 40 minutes in video mode. You will definitely need spare batteries with this camera. But I think the battery complaint is easy to overlook considering how good the A6000 is. The body itself does not have built-in stabilization, however, it does have a flash. And speaking of low light, 
As I previously mentioned, the Nikon D3500 was not a very good low light camera. However, this is pretty ideal for a beginner low light camera. This camera is completely clean up to 10,000 ISO in both photo and video. And speaking of video, it does HD up to 60. There is however no 4K, but this will give you a very, very solid HD image. The color profiles in this camera for video editing are pretty decent. It does not have anything fancy like S-Log2 or hybrid log camera. However, it does give you a neutral color profile. And if you pick the appropriate color profile, you can get a very decent image out of this even without S-Log2. Also, if you're looking to do a bit of slow motion, this camera does shoot at 60 frames per second. And another thing that I appreciate about this camera is that it has a 15 megabit XAVSC codec, which basically means is that you'll be able to do a lot of the video in post. It's not quite raw video or it's not quite ProRes. However, you'll really be able to push and pull your colors brighten or darken your image by at least a stop and a half. You'll get plenty of flexibility to cook up your own look in post. I would say the A6000 is a very good photo camera with 11 frames per second of shooting, a very good image sensor, and very good in low light. And as for video, it's again very good in low light, it has a very good sensor, and it does have 60 frames per second for slow motion, but the best thing about it is the fact that it has a neutral color profile so that you can get really good colors in post. And if you're new to video, it's key that you have a neutral color profile or some kind of cinema profile in your camera when doing video because a lot of times video does not have the same data rates as photo does so you really need the proper color profile to properly color grade or color correct your videos in post. And the last camera on our list is the Canon RP. Now this is a camera that I'm really excited about because it's a full frame camera for only a thousand dollars and it gives you the flexibility to grow your kit over time. So for a thousand dollars you get a full frame not an APS-C but a full frame 26 megapixel sensor with a 5 frames per second single focus and a 2.5 frames per second continuous focus shooting mode. And honestly, to just be able to get a full frame camera for $1,000 is pretty awesome. Some of the benefits of full frame is that a full frame camera is just better in low light because it's a larger sensor. You'll get a very cinematic or a very like magazine or billboard type look. If you really eventually want to get into commercial photography or high-end stills photography, I really recommend starting off and using a full frame. The only drawback of this camera is that it does not shoot particularly fast. At 5 frames per second in single focus mode and 2.5 frames per second in continuous focus mode, you might find yourself limited to the amount of stuff that you can shoot. I definitely would not recommend this camera for sports photography or wildlife photography, but if you're someone that does a lot of studio work, a lot of fashion work, a lot of work just in general where you don't need a lot of movement, this camera will be perfect for you because again, it is a full frame camera and it will give you stunning image quality that is on par with a six or an $8,000 camera. And I would gladly recommend this camera to a proper professional as long as they weren't doing fast paced action work. And one of the benefits of using this camera is that for $200, you can easily pick up all of Canon's old lenses. So you could pick up a 50 millimeter STM lens for 150. You could pick up a 24 millimeter lens for I believe $200 and you could slowly build your kit of lenses over time but at the very core of your kit you'll have a full frame beast. And this camera is also very very good for video. I personally think Canon does some of the best super sampled HD in the industry right now. This camera does beautiful HD from 24 frames per second all the way up to 60 frames per second. The 4K in this camera really isn't that great and I would probably skip it all together. It has way too much rolling shutter and it's a bit soft. I probably would only use this as a wide shot for an interview. But it does do 4K at 24 frames per second so if you wanted you could probably find a good use for it somewhere. Well what I would really focus on in this camera is the HD. The HD in this camera is super sampled. It's full of detail. It's very very sharp. You could easily zoom in up to 150% without too much image degradation. I really like the HD in this camera and I would really recommend this to a young artist, a young DP. This is a very, very good HD camera. Another thing that I really appreciate about this camera is Canon's dual pixel autofocusing system. Now Canon has one of the best autofocusing systems in the industry right now. And when I was talking about adapting older lenses, that dual pixel autofocus will work with older lenses and newer lenses. So your autofocus will always be very, very good. And the dual pixel autofocusing system itself is very fast, very reliable. And one of the things that I appreciate about it is that it works very well in live view, but it also works just as well through the optical viewfinder. Generally, autofocusing works either well in live view or optical viewfinder, but with the dual pixel autofocus, it works well in both. 
The design of the Canon RP is spectacular. It's rock solid, it's made of adenized aluminum, and has this really nice rubber grip all the way around it that honestly, when I pick it up, it feels like Batman's camera. The buttons on this thing are nice and clicky and have this really awesome sandpaper finish. The body itself is unfortunately not weather sealed and it does not have a shutter flap to protect the sensor, but this body is made to last and if you take care of it, it will last you forever. One of my favorite things about this camera is that it does have a sound articulating screen which allows you to get weird and interesting angles, lets you shoot from high angle, low angle, it just makes shooting from weird angles that much easier. And if you do want to do a bit of vlogging with this camera, that is available to you. Personally, I just love it when a camera has a side articulating screen so that it gives me the flexibility to shoot however I want. And if you are a vlogger or a content creator looking for your first camera, this is a camera that I would definitely recommend to you. It has solid video, solid photo, and overall it's a very good body structure. Now the low light in this camera is pretty decent. It's not quite as good as the A6000 which gives you clean up to 10,000 ISO, but if you played it safe, you could get very decent results at 1600 ISO or 2000 ISO. This camera does have all the standard ports like headphone jack, USB, HDMI. However, the one thing that I should mention is that the SD card is at the bottom next to the battery instead of the side. I know some people are very particular about their SD card placements. I personally don't care, but it's just something I wanted to make sure you guys knew. And lastly, let's talk about the battery. Unfortunately, this camera does not have the greatest battery life. I wouldn't expect it to last more than a few hours. Canon cameras generally use the LP6 battery, which will last you forever. But because it's a small mirrorless body, Canon uses the LP7 batteries in this, which are not quite as high capacity. They're about half the capacity of the LP6. So you definitely will need to pick up extra batteries with this camera. And one quick thing that I just want to mention now, personally, I don't think it's a big deal, but I want to make sure I properly inform you guys. Using this camera is more like shooting with film than digital. What I tend to do is either nail my exposure right in camera or I expose a little bit brighter than I have to. I find with this camera, you can go from brighter to dark, but you can't go from dark to bright. So I would either nail the exposure or shoot a little bit brighter than I have to. The darks in this camera tend to clip very quickly, but I find that this camera gives you particularly dark blacks and very good contrast ratio. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us on our top three beginner camera videos. If you are interested in these cameras, there's a link in the description down below for the absolute best pricing on these cameras. And if you have any questions, whatsoever about this camera or anything else that we discussed on this channel, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. As always, make sure to leave me a like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me figure out what kind of content you guys are into and what kind of content I should be making going forward. As always, like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.